What's going on everybody? Ryan with Golf Carts Modified. Are you looking at buying a long travel kit for your golf cart or wanting to get a better ride? Or maybe you already have a long travel kit. Guys, today we're going to go over some of the first few steps we're going to take in bulletproofing our long travel kit. Now step one would be to get bigger, thicker himes, which we've already ordered. They're not in yet. Step two, I've already cut some plates. We're going to start working on that. And step three, we're going to be covering some of the new shocks that we're putting on the front. We're also going to go over how much travel this kit really has and a few other things. So let's go modify. sitting there going, Ryan, but you had upgraded Himes in the last video, like this one. Yeah, but Ryan doesn't always pay attention when he's ordering stuff, and this is why I'm going to show you all this. Guys, depending on where you buy your Himes, which there's a lots of places online, you can go to Rusty's Off-Road, you can go to McMaster Car, you can buy them on eBay, which is where I used to buy mine was on eBay, and I thought I was getting a deal because I searched a half inch 20, which is what that thread is. But what I didn't do was make sure that they were all right hand thread. Yeah, now if you notice, uh oh, but yeah. I ordered left handed threads. I'm, actually what this is for is probably for like a pan hard bar or some type of link bar where you put a right handed thread on one side and a left handed thread on the other. Your boy was slipping. I wasn't paying attention. And now I've got eight left-handed thread. Yeah, not my best move. Anyways, guys, I gotta quit saying anyways. I say it all the time. It's like part of my vocabulary now. I did go ahead and cut my plates. Now, my plasma cutter was down, so I had to do this the old fashioned way which is good because not everybody has a plasma cutter at home if you want to try to do this. I did it the old fashioned way. I took a piece of cardboard, I laid it on my metal, and I traced it all out, and then I cut it with that. Yeah, I cut it with a cutoff wheel. Took a little time, but it turned out pretty good. Be nice and solid. Hey, if it works, it works, right? Not all of us have super high dollar plasma tables at their house. <clears throat> Travis, sorry. Must be something in the air. I don't know what it is. We got our plates cut. We're going to have to go through cleaning up the lower A arm so we can get ready to weld those in. The other thing is, is guys, my welder is at my house because my shop doesn't have 220 yet. So everything that I weld, I pretty much have to prep up here, drag to the house, weld it, and then bring it back. So time consuming. It's kind of a pain in the you know what. The other thing we're gonna be doing, shocks. Okay, this is the shock that comes with the Jake's long travel kit. Now, these are not a cheap shock. If you try to buy these just to replace the ones you have, the shock's like, this kit is like 230 or $240. Like it's, it's expensive. Now, if you look at this shock, they are nitrogen filled. And a lot of people make this mistake. A lot of people will take these, they'll unscrew this cap thinking it's air, and they'll bleed all the nitrogen out, and then they'll try to put air back in it. Guys, if you, if you do that, it's not going to work. You're going to have to take this to a station that has nitrogen, and they'll have to actually fill this back up. The other thing is, these springs on this shock are extremely stiff. And if you notice, they are the same progression through the spring, which makes this a much stiffer spring. But it's also what holds up all the weight to your cart. The problem with this is having a long travel kit, you're supposed to have a little bit of flex, you know, supposed to ride a lot smoother, which these do ride better than a leaf spring any day of the week. 
I don't, you can argue with me all you want. This right here on the front of an easy go or a club car is way better than any mono spring or any dual leaf spring that you have set up on the front. But some of us, you know, we're always striving to get better, trying to make stuff ride smoother. I mean, we were wanting to jump this one. I can't be coming down on teeth shattering shocks. So in the last video, I told you Corey found these. Once again, he found these on eBay because that's where Corey buys 99% of all his stuff is on eBay. He's like an eBay junkie. I don't, I don't get it. So we're going to a new shock. Now, guys, these are off of a Predator 500 or made for a Predator 500. These are a functional remote reservoir. They are adjustable. The only downside to this is you have to do some modifications in order to make this fit the Jake's Long Travel. Now, I know you're going, Brian, how can you modify that? It's a... Yeah, my mom's calling me. Uno momento, por favor. 20 minutes later. I know what you're thinking. You heard my mom's ringtone. Yes. If you were a friend of mine, or if you called me more than twice, you get a custom ringtone. I pick everybody's. Corey used to be a police officer, so naturally, when he calls me, the first thing that comes up is police academy. I'm not going to tell you what Travis's is because I would probably get kicked off of YouTube. So yeah, everybody has one. Anyway, going back to what we were talking about. Talking about having to modify this coilover to fit the Jake's Long Travel. Now, obviously, we don't have to do anything for the length. It bolts right in. But, what we do have to modify are the mounting holes. Okay, so the bolt that goes through on the jake shock is pretty large bolt so you have to drill both sides out to clearance because i'd rather run the bigger bolt now i will tell you i didn't film it but i will tell you this low and slow and make sure your drill bit is lubricated because this is rubber inside and you do not want to twist this out or burn it up and melt that rubber and it will get hot so go low and slow the other small thing that we had to do is there is a little aluminum spacer for the shock that goes on the Jake's Long Travel. And that's what pitches the shock forward a little bit so it doesn't hit the A-arm. You will have to trim that because the bottom of the shock is thicker than the Jake's. That's what she said. So now I just eyeballed mine. I didn't go out there and take a measuring tape and measured it. I literally stuck mine up there with the bolt in it, put it up there, put a line, came in there with a cutoff wheel and went, fuck. Cause that's how I roll. I don't measure stuff. Pfft. Measuring's for nerds. I don't measure. I mean, I do measure, but I'm not gonna measure that. I'm just gonna whack that thing off and be done. Let's get into this down and dirty style. So I told you we had to drill out our holes in order to accommodate the bigger bolt that comes with the Jake's kit. Now these are a grade eight bolt. Now, if you don't have a standard bolt and screw gauge, I highly recommend go getting one. Yes, mine's from Odessa Nut and Bolt. I got this when I worked in the oil field. I've probably had this thing for at least 20 something years. It goes everywhere with me. It's easy. Look at that first shot. Uh, 7 sixteenths. I already know what I got. Guys, this thing comes in so handy. I always keep one around. It gives you your length. <laughs> what is that one? Five inches, hey. Anyway, 7 sixteenths by 5 inches for your bottom bolt. Your top one is going to be a 7 sixteenths by a, about a 2 and 3 quarter bolt. So yeah, these come in real handy. Now, when I drilled mine out, I went just above a 7 sixteenths. That way I could get it to drop in nice and smooth. without, And it's not, it's not wobbly. But if you try to drill with a 7 sixteenths, you're gonna, it's going to be a super, super tight fit. So, yeah, I went a little bit, a little bit and beyond. This was the aluminum spacer I was talking about. This goes on the bottom of the shock. So, when you put your shock in, this fits right here. 
this will have to be trimmed ever so slightly to make sure that we can get this new shock in. Like I said, I just throw mine up there. And Look, you're going to cut off that much. You see that? Yeah. That's how much we're cutting off. Not a whole lot. Another handy feature with this, it's got a nut gauge on it. You can come in here, double check your nuts. Those nuts, guys. Get your minds out of the gutter. Now, guys, remember, like I said, when you go to drill these out, you want to go low and slow and use plenty of lube. That's what she said. Oh, my God. What did I say? All right, let's go throw this on the cart. Okay, so we have our front A-arms assembled. We have our spindle in. Now, guys, right now, we're actually on a jig. We're floating. So this is at full droop. And you can see we can get our movement out of our double A-arm here. Now, our shock is going to bolt up top here and come down to this bottom A-arm. So all of the weight on this cart really loads on this lower A-arm, on this bolt, and this top bolt holding that shock. That's what's pretty much holding up all the way to your suspension, all right? That's why you have a big coil over on there. Now, if we measure this, now I will say this for the Jake slip. This center line does not deflect very much. It pretty much stays straight. So that's a good thing. That's gonna give us a good ride. Now, without any shock on, we can see how much flex the, these A-arms really have. And it's a lot more than you would think. So our baseline on the jig, the bottom of our hub is at 14 inches. So we're going to lift this up. And now the bottom is at 23 inches. So guys... That shows you we have almost not, we have nine inches of movement in these arms. Does that mean when you put the shocks on, you're going to have nine inches of movement? Absolutely not, because that shock is going to be tight. And even if it fully inbounded, that shock is not going to fully compress with this on there. Realistically, I would say we're probably going to have anywhere from about four to five inches of total travel in the front. Now. The way we would really have to figure this is we're going to have to find what the angle of our shock is. And we would have to dismantle the shock, cycle the shock, and then we could get a true reading of what our travel is. Now, that's a lot more intuitive, and we will probably get into it in another video. But for right now, I just wanted to show you what it does with no shock on it. Now, as we were talking about this point right here being a... Not that it's weak, guys. I'm not trying to talk bad about this lift. But you gotta remember, most of this stuff is designed for a golf cart, for golf cart purposes. Nobody's taking a golf cart out to a track and just jumping the ever-loving mess out of it. Now, I will say this, we have wheelied Jolie's cart, Corey's cart, tremendously on these lifts. And we haven't broke one yet. Now, I have seen people bend these arms, bend the shocks. I mean, if you come down with enough force, you are gonna bend something or break something. I mean, these were not designed for that application. They're, they're designed to look cool, give you a much better ride. I don't think these were ever really intended for strenuous off-road use. But hey, that's why we're gonna modify it and that's why we're gonna fix it. I don't think I'm gonna plate the top A-arm because I really don't see the need as you can see, there's no, all this does is keeping, it's just keeping your kingpin and everything straight. There's literally no force on this arm. And then after doing a lot of research on core trucks, pre-runners, nobody boxes in the upper A-arms hardly. Now they do come in and these are very, very strong and structurally sound. So that's what we're going to focus on. On a side note, the wheels and tires we're going to be running on this are a set of 12 inch tall by 14 inch wide aluminum rear wheels mounted with a 25 inch bear claw. And a lot of people either love this look or dislike this look. I'm running them because of weight. 
those wheels and tires are extremely light and they seem to act a lot better when you're doing wheelies when you come down because of the width of the wheel and tire it gives you a much wider contact patch to land on and it doesn't seem to jar or hurt the cart as bad and i mean you think about it if you have a, a big 14 inch wheel with like a, a 25 that's you know a normal golf cart tire that's cast or whatever it's going to be extremely heavy so that's you know two for the front that's just more weight coming down when you do hit so we're going to try to keep that as light as possible well as you can see we went ahead and put our wheels and tires on so we could mock everything up i did go ahead and install the shocks now something i didn't video because i wasn't sure if i was going to leave this the way it is or if i was going to do something else was i did build a strut tower brace out of eighth inch plate and uh, guys all i did was do the same steps i did with the a-arms I took all my measurements. This is 18 inches across, and then your bolt holes are 16 and 5 eighths, and I did have to taper the corners to get them to fit the shocks. Now, this is gonna give this a little bit more rigidity up top because the Jake's Long Travel doesn't come with the tabs that it used to to bolt here. And I might leave this, I might not, because I have other plans for adding gussets up here. The problem is, is adding gussets depending on what body we run. If we run a storm body, it's going to be really hard to gusset this unless I cut into the storm body, which I'm not a big fan of. Uh, now, if we run a stock cow, I might be able to get away with building some standoffs that, you know, having some bars that come down and reconnect to the top tubes. I might end up having to just build regular gussets. I hadn't decided yet. I'm going to have to go get a cow. We'll do that in the next video. Everything's mocked up. The shocks are in. Everything's looking good. Now, obviously, we, we're not underweight because we're still on the jig. Now... One of the other ideas that we had for running this was, you know, now since I have extra himes, I thought about taking some tubing and building, get some standoffs, and actually building like a real strut tire brace that you can actually put tension on, make these tight. I mean, that way, we're, I mean, that's pretty solid. I don't think it's going to move, especially after we add some gussets in. But the biggest thing is, is I, I want to make this kit to where if, if I like it, potentially we can manufacture these and make bulletproof kits for these long travels. Now, lots of measurements are gonna have to be made, which I know earlier I said only nerds measure, but when you start getting into building custom stuff to make sure you don't hurt yourself, pull out a tape measure. So guys, that's step one to really bulletproofing this. Hopefully the Himes come in here pretty quick and we can, as soon as we get the Himes in, we're gonna take it and weld the plates in. <laughs> Never fails. This is a customer that turned into a friend. He lives in Illinois. He calls me more than my wife, I swear. And if he's watching this, he knows exactly who he is because he calls me like four times a day, every day. He's a good dude, love him to death, but geez, quit calling me. Gee, I'm trying to film here. So guys, like I was saying, as soon as the Himes get in, We'll put those on and then we will weld in our plates. I don't want to weld in the plates until I have the A-arms bolted in all the way because they do spread a little bit when you're putting them in. You have to squeeze them in and I would rather get my himes locked and set where I want them. That way I can rotate the cart and get my plate set and then tack everything in. That way when I pull the arms off, they're not too wide to where I can't get them back in there if that makes sense. I'll explain it in the next video. So next time hopefully we have the himes, we can get the plates welded in. We might go ahead and fab up that other strut tower brace. We're gonna start looking at bracing some other stuff on the front. We're gonna get that tacked in. Like I said, guys, it's hot here. I'm trying to get some of this done. It's like 104, 105 outside. Also, I pretty much have to kind of design up here, load it up, take it to my house, weld it, bring it back, which will be a process for a little bit. Son of a bitch! Like I said, it'll be a process. We're going to, have to come back and forth. We got a lot of welding to do on this cart, way more than I had originally anticipated. After really kind of researching and looking at off-road stuff and knowing what I want the cart to do, I still need it to be safe because I'm going to be driving it. So I'm going to be gusseting a lot of things. We're going to be adding some metal. Uh, the rear suspension, I was going to do leaf springs with like a flip shackle. Son of a bitch! 
think I have kind of decided against that because I, I would either have to have custom springs made that give us enough arch and enough spring to allow the cart to, to hit. The, you know, HD leaves are stiff. They're way stiff. That's what holds up the weight of your cart. And even with a swing shackle, I'm afraid that there's just not going to be enough angle of movement and it's just going to be a really, really rough landing. So I'm looking at ditching the battery tray, building my own battery tray and coming up with a custom four link. That way we can get a little bit longer arm. We get a lot better droop. It might be easier to run some shocks, which the rear shocks are going to be expensive. Holy crap. I think the, I think the two back shocks might cost as much as the 70 volt lithium battery. So yeah, if not, it'll be, they'll be at least the same price as the AC kit. So shocks anywhere from about 1500 to about 3,500, depending on what type of shock, whether we go with a, just a straight dual coilover, or if we go with a double bypass or a triple bypass, guys, it is a golf cart. I mean, I don't know that we need a full triple bypass setup. I mean, I don't think we're going to get 10 feet of air. At least I don't think so. Guys, I wanted to say thank you for watching the video. The channel is growing. We're over 9,000 followers. And to say thank you, as soon as we hit 10,000, I'm going to give away an Avita 600 amp DC controller. So guys, when we hit 10,000 members on the YouTube channel, I'm going to give away a 600 amp Navita controller. Brand new in the box. Ship it to your door. Boom. Now staying with that, I think it's only cool that if we do this like the Facebook page. So every 10,000 followers we add in the YouTube, I'm going to give stuff away. And I'm not gonna, just going to give away you know, little stuff. Uh, my buddy that owns Mavericks Custom Carts builds his own seats. He does pretty much every golf cart. TXT, DS, Precedent, whatever. He has really, really high quality seats. I mean, you're talking like $1,800 seat kits. I think we're going to give away a set of those. Maybe when we hit 20 or 30,000, I'm sure we'll give away an AC kit. You never know. We get up into the higher numbers. We'll start giving away some bigger stuff like lithium batteries. And who knows, we hit 100,000 maybe one day. You never know what we'll give away. So guys, thanks for watching. Remember to not sweat to death outside because it's hot. Go work on your car, go have fun. Go modify. Yeah, go modify. Guys, don't forget, if you're looking for the ultimate power for your golf cart, we sell the Navitas 600 5K and 604K with Eco batteries. Everything from a 51 volt all the way up to the 70 volt. Guys, make sure to check us out at gcmod.com or golfcartsmodified.com. Hope everybody enjoyed it. Y'all have a great time. Go modify.